Perhaps once thought of as a toy, drones have become so much more. Almost 1.8 million of them are registered in the U.S. You may even own one yourself, and turns out a lot of police actually have them too. In our latest episode of What's Brewing on YouTube, 10 Investigation of Bourne breaks down how a Florida bill would expand officers' drone use and why some are raising concerns about your First Amendment rights. More than 70 Florida law enforcement agencies either use drones already or will soon. And a Florida bill would give officers even more rights to fly. Can you think of any situations where you wanted to use a drone but your agency wasn't able to because of the way Florida law is now? Yeah, I, I, I could think of a uh, protest for an example. But some activists are raising red flags. These racist cops have got to go. This is a slippery slope, not just for BLM activists, but for all Americans. Let's start by talking about where Florida law stands now on police using drones. It says a law enforcement agency may not use a drone to gather evidence or other information, then provides a bunch of exceptions for things like preventing a terrorist attack, a search warrant, to prevent imminent danger to life, the escape of a suspect, or to search for a missing person. This new bill would add more exceptions. Getting an aerial perspective of a crowd of 50 people or more. Traffic management, but not traffic tickets. To get evidence at a crime scene or traffic crash scene. To check out natural disaster damage. And for fire department use. This is State Senator Tom Wright. He introduced the bill. Well, Jenna, let's, let me ask you this question, so I think it'll make it a little bit easier for you. If if, uh, if we know that there's gonna be a large crowd of people and it's gonna be on the beach, so um, we'll just put an officer up there in the top floor of the penthouse of the hotel with his high power binoculars. Does he need a warrant? No. A few minutes into our conversation, things went south. A similar bill that you co-sponsored last year died in committee. Why do you think that this year is gonna be different? Be <laughs> well, the simple answer is, is the committee chairman termed out. <laughs> that's really the answer. So to be honest with you, that person for some reason uh, was dead set against the word she said, if I see a drone or if I see law enforcement in the same bill, we won't hear it. And that person has termed out. So um, we're going to give it a run again. Who was that person? <laughs> Thank you very much. What, what was the name of that person? Uh, I'm not saying. Okay. I'll, I mean, I'll, I'm just going to look up who was the chair of the committee. So if you don't know... Well, you know, Jenna, sometimes when people say that, you know, they don't want to talk to the press, an attitude like that is one of the reasons why. Because I asked you who the chair of your committee was. So it's really been fun talking to you today, and I hope that this has been helpful for you and uh, look forward to seeing you the next time. Thank you very much. You're not going to answer any other questions about your bill? So I did look it up, and the Florida Senate Rules Committee chair in 2020 was former state senator Elizabeth Benequisto. Her response to this, quote, people oftentimes remember conversations vastly differently. Lawmakers can address those privacy concerns. Uh, let's take a deeper dive into how. The senior investigative researcher at the Electronic Frontier Foundation recommends writing more restrictions into Florida law, not leaving it up to individual agencies. Those restrictions could include how long law enforcement agencies are allowed to hold onto drone recordings.